This video introduces and explains stair geometry and positioning settings and options. Let's display the stair settings dialog and select the top item of the tree structure panel on the left named stair. The right side of the dialog displays various stair settings panels which offer different editing options. The first panel is called geometry and positioning. On the left side, you can set the height of the stair. The top and bottom of stairs can be linked to stories, just like walls, columns, and zones. The settings and fields are like the settings of other ARCHICAD tools. You can set a home story, as well as the top story using offset values. The stair top field can also be set to not linked to a story. In this case, its height can be set in the stair height field. In addition, the stair top field offers an option available only for stairs. If you select the flexible option, the stair height field becomes grayed again and cannot be set. Instead, the stair height will be calculated based on the number of risers that result from your exact stair baseline geometry input. Please note that the flexible option is not available for stairs that have already been placed. This option can only be used before you begin creating a new stair. The right side of the panel offers various settings which determine how the stair is generated. There are various grouped buttons on the left and fields on the right. The uppermost pair of buttons lets you specify whether your stair should start and end with a tread or a riser. The left button lets you set the stair to start with tread or start with riser. While the right button lets you set the stair to end with tread or end with riser. To the right of this pair of buttons are three fields. The uppermost field lets you specify the stair width value. This is the width value that will be applied to all flights and landings of the stair as measured relative to and perpendicular to the stair baseline. The number of risers field below it displays the possible values for the number of risers. It's calculated based on the stair height and the possible riser height values. The value for the number of risers must be an integer. Select the number of risers for the stair. Please note that when the stair top field is set to the flexible option, this field is grayed because it will be calculated based on the stair geometry input. Similarly, the riser height field below it displays the possible riser height values. These are calculated based on the stair height and allowed riser height and going depth ranges. Select the riser height value for the stair. The second button pair from the top controls how the goings depth of the stair is generated. The left button specifies that the stair's going depth can be flexible. This means that as you create the stair's baseline, the stair's going depth may flexibly chain within its allowed range, as seen by the feedback during the geometry input of the stair baseline. The going depth field to the right of the button pair is grayed in this case, and displays the possible going depth range calculated based on the stair height and possible riser height values. The right button, when activated, specifies that the stair has a fixed going depth. In this case, the going depth field to its right becomes enabled and lets you specify the desired going depth value. This value will still have to fall within the allowed going depth range. The third button pair from the top lets you select between a straight riser and a slanted riser. When the straight riser button is activated, 
The risers are vertical, and the slanting angle field to the right of the button pair is grayed, because in this case it's irrelevant. If the right slanted riser button is activated, the slanting angle field becomes enabled. The riser slant may be defined either by angle, in which case you need to specify the slant of the risers relative to the horizontal, or by distance. In this case, you need to specify the distance the riser bottom is set back from the riser top. Next is a trio of buttons that define the turning type of the stair. Click one of them to set the three possible options. These are, from left to right, automatic landing, wider with equal angles, and winder with equal goings. The pop-up button to their right gives access to turning type options. This depends on which turning type is selected and subsequently gives specific options for each type. The field to the right of these buttons is the walking line offset field. The walking line is normally fixed and is placed at the center of the stair. For this reason, the field as well as the pop-up button above it are grayed by default and the field displays the walking line offset value measured from the stair baseline. The value by default is half of the stair width value. The text above the field displays the fixed center option. When the winder with equal goings option is selected for turning type, the pop-up button above the field becomes enabled. This lets you specify a walking line position and offset. When either the fixed left offset or fixed right offset option is selected, the walking line offset field becomes enabled. This lets you specify an offset for the walking line from the left or right side of the stair respectively. Please note that this affects the geometry of stair treads because those equal going values are measured along with the walking line even when it's not at the center of the stair. The last trio of buttons in the field to their right define the baseline position. Use these to set the baseline from left to right, left center, and right of the stair body, respectively. When the left or right button is selected, the baseline offset field to the right becomes enabled and you can specify an offset value from the left or right side of the stair. Positive values will move the baseline toward the center of the stair body. Please note that some values in the panel are affected by the allowed ranges in the Rules and Standards panel. This is presented and explained in another video.